Hello and welcome to Storytime with Dirt. I'm Dirt Spawn and we are continuing today with the story The Power of the Ancients. Last time we left off they were in the magic shop and uh, they were they were consorting with the wizard with the crystal ball and finding out where the enemy went. So let's continue. Just found my place here. What about the power? Have they figured out how to open the orb containing it? Asked Odin. The man paused and then said, I see it on a stand in a room surrounded by fire. It has not been tampered with. Thank the creator, said Billy. Now onward to Moshul. Ahem, my payment. Yes, of course. You have been most helpful, said Billy, paying the man. They left the shop and got back on the horses and took them to the stables. Then the two followed Bildi to the docks where they boarded a dwarven steamboat. I've never been on a steamboat before. You think it goes fast? Odin asked Isabel. At least five times that of a regular ship, she said as they boarded. Bildi looked back at them and said, Yes, this ship will take us to Morshul in a day and a half. Odin and Isabel looked at each other and smiled. Soon the large reinforced boat let out a large hiss and they were off. The boat arrived at Morshul in the day and a half as Bildi suggested. They all walked off onto the wet sandy beach. A tropical forest lay before them. I asked the captain to give us three days. That should be more than enough time to get to that fortress, explained Bildi. Let's get a move on said the excited Odin. Isabel and Bildi followed him into the forest. After a while, Bildi took point and, and followed the tracks until they split in two directions. So, Mr. Tracker, where to now? asked Odin. Then Isabel spoke up and asked, How are we sure which way to turn? Quiet, girl, we are not alone, said Bildi. He loaded his crossbow. Odin readied his sword and Isabel her staff. The sound of a deep, menacing growl rolled through the, f the foliage. A tall, muscular figure rose up from the ground and jumped through the trees in a short moment. The creature resembled an orc, but its skin was brown and was three-quarters the size of a troll. It landed in front of Isabel, and then Odin swung his sword into the creature's ankle. It roared in pain. Bildi shot the creature in its side, but Bildi was knocked out of the way by the monster's large fist. Isabel shot needles of light into the creature's face and rushed down its face and neck. Then Odin took his sword and did a fancy sp spin, slicing the creature's stomach. A fan of light from her staff binding the creature, which sent it into a frenzy. Get out of the way, Isabel! advised Odin as the failing, flailing creature got closer to her. She ran over to where Odin was and Bildi shot it right in the back. The creature continued flailing his arms around then he paused for a moment and rubbed his bloody eyes. The creature's sight came back and then he roared at Odin and Isabel. Isabel stepped between the creature and Odin and pointed her staff at the large orc-like creature. The creature threw Isabel aside and into a tree and rushed in on Odin. He grabbed him by the throat and lifted Odin in the air. Odin reached his sword back and stabbed it right into the creature's ear canal. Odin was then dropped as the creature held its ear. Odin ca coughed and fought for air after being choked half to death. A short moment passed and Odin was on his feet. Bildi shot the creature in the back of his head which stunned it. Odin sought the opportunity, jumped while doing a backspin strike, thus cutting its throat. The orc-like creature fell to the ground. The three companions took off with Bildi in front, Isabel in the middle and Odin on in the back. It took all day to move through the forest. The tracks Bildi had followed led them to a great number of stairs that led up the mountain to the fortress. There's nothing I enjoy more than a thousand old stairs to get me where I need to go, said Odin sarcastically. Then said, let's go. The three companions hurried up to the old, up the old stone stairs. I think it is more like three thousand, Odin said. Odin told Isabel. 
Odin was nearly sprinting up the stairs with the other two and said all the more reason to pick up the pace. Then he began running faster up the stairs. After a while they became, they became tired. Odin was ahead of them and they all rested on the stairs to catch their breath. Come now, we mustn't rest long, let's move, said Bildi after they caught their breath. The three continued up the mountain and soon arrived at a great fortress. How are we supposed to know where to go? asked Odin. Maybe we should ask someone, choked Isabel. Ha ha, good one, Izzy. I doubt anyone here would rather talk than attack first. All right, you two, enough. We need to figure out a way in first, said Billy, looking around the large rock they were hiding behind. He looked at the fortress and saw that it was too large to scale with the rope he had with them. What if we wait until it's dark and make the guard open the gate while threatening him with my sword to his throat, suggested Odin. Hobgoblins can see in the dark, noted Isabel. The sewers, Billy exclaimed. What? said both Isabel and Odin. I'd rather not, said Isabel. Come on, a fortress like this must have a sewer, said Billy. Billy, isn't there another way? asked Odin. Come, lad, it's an adventure. Now follow me. Let's sneak past the guards through these rocks. The dwarf moved quietly among the rocks, and Isabel and Odin followed in that order. Once on the opposite side of the fortress, they saw the sewer grate with water flowing out in the mount of the mountain, not to mention the musty smell. The grate was block bolted shut. Odin and Isabel looked at each other, both thinking that perhaps the dwarf had gone mad. How are we supposed to enter if the sewers are bolted shut? Isabel wondered. Billy reached into his pack and got out a ball with a string attached to it. He deviously smiled at them and said, It's going to be loud. Billy pulled the string out, placed the ball at the grate, and ran the other direction, jumping behind the rocks. Odin and Isabel were told to get behind the rocks as well. The ball exploded and made a thunderous sound. Odin and Isabel stood up slowly and saw that the iron grate had been completely blown off. Not even my magic can do that, said Isabel in amazement. They hurried into the sewers, but the tunnel was too small to stand up in, so they had to crawl. Isabel was trying not to vomit from the stench. This is perfect, exclaimed Billy. What? Yes, said Isabel. Crawling through this grime and gruel will mask our scent, said Billy. Odin smiled and said, It's not so bad once you get used to it. It's ruining my robe, said Isabel. Odin replied with a laugh, You'd better hope these stains come out. Quiet, you two, whispered Billy. Soon enough, they emerged out of the sewers and entered a courtyard right on the edge of the fortress, behind some crates and barrels. There were ho three hobgoblins. Think we can sneak past them? whispered Isabel. I was thinking one for each of us, smiled Odin deviantly. Isabel whined, Oh, Odin, must we? The lad is right. We either kill them now or later. Billy said quietly, All right, I got the one in the middle. Let's go, said Odin as he charged out and stuck the hobgoblin in the back. Billy shot one on the battlements and Isabel blinded the last one, then shot needles of burning light into its neck. They wait. They wait. They won't be getting up any time soon, said Odin. Not unless they have a necromancer. Don't worry, though. Chances of that are slim, said Billy as he turned and turned to walk through the door. Just then the gate rose and in ran the two guards. Odin charged at them and put on a fancy display of moves which cut them both down. Isabel smiled and clapped her hands. Let's move quickly, said Billy. They moved on into the fortress, and there were five doors to choose from. Two to the left and two to the right were of normal size, but were dwarfed compared to the two double doors in the, in the center going up a short flight of stairs. We should split up from here, said Billy. Great! I'll take the far left. Izzy, you take the other one, on the right. 
said Odin. Then Isabel started to hyperventilate. I I don't want to be alone. Odin, we we've done everything together, she said frantically. Odin grabbed her hand gently. It's okay, Izzy. You can't depend on me forever. I'm certain you'll be okay, said Odin, caressing her face. Isabel took a few controlled breaths. Oh, Odin, you always know what to say. I will not enjoy this, will I, said Isabel. Meet me back here in 15 minutes, said Bildi as he went up the stairs. Odin went through his door and Bildi went through his, which led to more stairs. Isabel remained behind and was now alone in the dim light of the torch that hung from the wall. She slowly opened her door and saw it was a dark hallway with few torches. She hesitated going in. Isabel lit her staff so she could see as she ventured into the dark. Bildi reached the top of the stairway and gazed upon the throne room. On the throne sat an ominous looking man. He wore a black and dark blue robe. A black and dark blue robe. He was old with long white hair and his beard hung four inches from his chin. But that's all the beard he had. A necromancer. On each side of him stood his bodyguards. Undead men plated in rusty armor, and big men at that, for they rose seven feet. And who are you? said the necromancer. Bildi kept his composure and aimed his crossbow at the man on the throne. I will, down, I will not answer to a filth like you. And after saying that, he released a bolt at the necromancer. The necromancer quickly dodged his head, and the bolt was shot into the headrest of the throne. He took out the bolt, looked at it, and said, and back to Bildi, then he laughed at Bildi. I know why you're here, dwarf. I have been watching you since you came to my island. Soon I will open the power's container and become the most powerful man on Sulks. Yes, I will become a god, said he. The only thing you'll become is worm food, said Bildi as he dropped his crossbow and quiver and brought out his axe. Then Bildi charged in, and at that moment the necromancer extended his hand at the two guards, lifted their giant swords, and intercepted Bildi. One of the guards attempted to strike Bildi, but he blocked the attack with his axe handle and was sent up into the air. Bildi landed on his feet, though. As Odin continued down the way he was headed, he noticed a foul stench. He soon entered a great room with cells cages that hung from the ceiling by chains and torture equipment which was in use. The monster using the equipment was like the one Odin, Isabel, and Bildi had fought earlier, except this one looked like it had literally been stitched together. It was wearing a cloth mask and also covered in scars. The dungeon master looked at Odin and grabbed his axe. He slowly walked toward Odin, grabbing his axe on the, dragging his axe on the ground. Odin readied his sword, ready to be taken down. Eh, big guy? Said Odin. He ran right at the dungeon master, and the dungeon master lifted his axe to strike, but Odin was too fast. The dungeon master's axe hit the ground as Odin dodged it. Odin noticed mas the dungeon master had keys at his side, but the dungeon master wouldn't let Odin have them. He aimed his next swing at Odin's neck, and Odin dodged that as well. Certainly you're a slow bastard, aren't you? said Odin. The next move was like was the monstrous creature swung his axe, and Odin brought up his sword to block it. The dungeon master pushed down on Odin, but Odin would not give up. He planted his feet into the wet brick floor. His sword was bending. Then with all his strength, he pushed the dungeon master back. The dungeon master spun his axe over his head, coming at Odin with fury. Odin stayed back, then the monster made, it, made his move. Once more, the agile Odin dodged his attack, but this time went in for a counterattack and cut off his left arm above the elbow where his seam was. Black blood ran from the monster's wound. Isabel walked down the hallway and down some stairs. She treaded carefully, for there was a very long drop beside her. 
She cast an orb of light down the abysmal pit and went down, down, down. She followed the stairs until she came to a doorway. She went through the door and there on a pedestal stop, sat the orb. The power of the ancients. And that is where we will stop for today. Thank you for joining me in another part of the power of the ancients. Let's see how much we got left. Maybe we can conclude it next episode. So once again, thank you for joining me. Hit that subscribe button if you like the story. And uh, click notifications so you can keep up with my stories. Anyway, uh, have a good day and goodbye.